we will start the discussion now this is the model introduction for computer fundamentals and here the doctor details of dr kanesh and uh, what are the unit learning outcomes on completion of this unit students should be able to so what are the things you should be able to describe the fundamental architecture and operating principles of a computer system so this is very important to understand the fundamental architecture how it works how it designs interpret computer system specifications and standards how they are related to system function now during this session we are trying to discuss some important aspects and how this computer would uh, work properly how how what are the components connected to each other compare different types of components and subsystems and their relative impacts on system function and performance so this is another aspect that mainly focused on make recommendations on the suitability of a computer system and components of a given function now this is this is one of very important uh, aspect during this uh, session this uh, series you should be recommend a computer uh, or a given uh, product such as a tab or a hp product or a whatever the product uh, for a given specific job role as an example there might be a graphic designer who is mostly focusing on gpu graphical processing unit and there might be a technical guy who is much focused focused on the uh, activities related to coding so these two people have different aspects as well as there might be a management person who really requires to communicate with the, the clients and uh, it's focused on the communication aspects connecting to the internet and uh, uh, fancy and so on and so forth so if 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 you want to give a recommendation for a specific set of people or a specific job role you should be able to understand the most uh, optimum hardware and uh, why this hardware requirement satisfies this person's objective so at the end of the day at the end of this uh, session you should be understand you should give a recommendation to set of people so this might be one of your uh, group project explain the interconnection in between software hardware components of computer system and the process involved to make them together so finally uh, this is the broad uh, understanding of this subject next uh, we will go a little bit uh, further uh, the topics covered under this uh, case uh, basically can you see uh, shall I? I think you can see it right the topics covered the components of uh, basic computer system overview of how computer works brief history of computers uh, unit structure and assessment uh, we have uh, almost discussed this one so i'm not must uh, mostly focus on this one uh, for the history i don't want to uh, have a discussion but i will give a couple of minutes uh, as a team uh, to work on it and uh, you should be able to uh, complete that activity uh, during the class and i will share uh, 365 document office document uh, among you your team each uh, each and every team so you could be able to add the content into that but i'll mainly focus on these two aspects today the module objectives again uh, under this module uh, describe the basic components of a computer system uh, give an overview of evaluation of computers discussion of current trends and computer technology uh, last few sessions like uh, cloud computing cloud uh, iot and uh, some of the things related to networking will covered uh, during this session 
explain what is this unit covers and blah blah yeah i have almost completed so i'm not much focus on these things but uh, this one i'll keep for future so you will learn uh, module 9 8 9 10 around most of the things focus on these trends but i will give very high level uh, overview of these trends evolution of computers to buy us what is a system the very first question what is a system a system is something that could be able to perform some specific work or a work simply human body it's a system one of very complex system in the world a car is a complex system in the world a computer is another complex system in the world but this system could be able to divide into smaller 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 parts smaller and smaller parts as an example we can take uh, this one uh, this portion this part into out and we can take uh, skull as uh, separate and jaws as separate teeth as separate eyes as separate nose as separate brain separately similarly we can take uh, one hand out and the other hand out right we can we, we can do this kind of a thing we can take heart out lungs out everything we can take it out into separate parts the important important aspect is once it comes to a system almost all of these subsystems your head nose brain uh, nerve, nerves everything should be connected together if there's some sort of uh, disconnected environment disconnected situation in a subsystem so what is a subsystem your head your brain your hand if it is disconnected the functionality might might not work as expected similarly we'll take a car if we take a car if we can take uh, wheels out we can take uh, all these windscreen lights everything out all of these are subsystems some components or subsystems each and every subsystem or component to have some specific objective and a goal finally if we connected everything together then we are stating all right this is a car this is a car this is a car if we remove this is a wheel side mirrors and stuff basically same situation for a computer we could be able to divide into separate components and we can state or right, these, 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 these things are in here and there. Very simple concept. So finally, you should understand a subsystem is something that creates by or produce by combining different subsystems. If we divide it back to subsystems, we are unable to find a system. There's no kind of a system at the at birth. If we take uh, out the head is out, now this body would not function at all. That's all. Hence, system might work up to some extent, but there are some defects. Heart system might not work. So you should understand, all right, yeah, yeah, well, there are some uh, instances we could be able to take it out uh, and some instances we can't take it out. Similarly, in this car, if, if you remove the engine, that's it. No more, no more. But we can uh, take it out, the windscreen, we can take it out, side mirrors, we can take it out, doors even, we can take it out up to some extent. Now, what is that, all right? We can drive the vehicle, but wheels, if you remove the wheels, that's all. We can't uh, drive further. If we remove the engine, that's it. We can't. Similarly, for a computer. Finally, you should understand, all right, this is a system. It's, it's not something easy. It has a lot of, uh, it, it's, it's a connected environment. It's, it has connected subsystems. A set of a uh, series of subsystems are there. And each and every subsystem has a specific objective or a goal. After combining all of these subsystems, we could be able to see a big system. That is, that is the story of a system. The subcomponents are connected together. If you, if you don't like to state it's a subsystem, you can state, all right, 
you have different uh, components together or collective components together to give some sort of output. Once it comes to a computer system, it's a, it's a system. It takes input data, process it, and produce the output. So I'm pretty sure you all know about this uh, cycle. Whenever you need to give some input to the system, you could be able to store as it is, or you could be able to process it. There's a com special component called processor, which processes all of your data. Then finally it produces as an output. If we take, if we take an example, if we take an example, here the input data, <clears throat> it's a movie. It's a movie, right? It's a movie, which is stored in the storage or it might be some external connected to internet and taking the data, YouTube video. Or just think if it is too complex, just think nothing. It's just what we call, uh, what we call a Word document, a Word document. You're typing some text in here. There's a keyboard, an external factor provides an in input for this document. Somehow there might be a microphone provides input. Almost all of these input devices are focusing on input data to a computer. Then the next one is processing. It might be processed to specific scenario. As an example, you can watch the movie. You can type the document. This is a processing component. It processes very fast manner. Once the process data, once, the, once data is processed, it could provide it as an output. Sometimes it might be a printed material or it might be voice or it might be display in the screen. Behind the scene, one important thing in here, that is a storage. In each and every time we can store the data, take it from the storage and we can, we can take it into storage or else we can put into this storage or we can take it out from the storage too. So this is very basic or very high level uh, computer system. Again, you could see the same story. There are a lot of input devices are here. These devices provides input to the system. And here the process, sorry, here the processor, the hardware device which supports to processing. And here the storage, it might be a kind of a temporary storage or it might be a permanent storage like your disk. Then it provides as an output in your screen or else it might be a voice speakers, speakers, or it might be any other mechanism. Nowadays, we have much more complex input and output devices. Now, I have a question. I have a question. Sorry, first of all, do you have any questions? Do you have any questions up to now? No questions? Okay. I have a question there. What is my question? Once we are using a mobile phone, we have touch screen. Is that an input device or an output device? Touch screen in mobile device. Touch screen in your mobile device. Yes, thanks. There are answers. Input as well as both. So basically, uh, a touch screen could be able to accept your input. It could take all of the things, all of the commands that you are giving to the to that device. So if you take this screen, if you touch a specific place, it identifies all right, this person touched this person, this person, this place. Then 
if it requires to give a pop up in a screen. So that means the input data from a finger, then it processed and there's an output. The output produces in the same screen. So basically in your mobile phone, the touch screen in your mobile phone provides functionality of a both input as well as output. The primary design has much complex than the usual uh, input devices and output devices because it, it can handle both sides simultaneously. So once it comes to touch screen, it has much uh, complex design. So you should understand, yeah, well, it configured for both uh, aspects. Some terminology, hardware, software, firmware. Anyone needs to know about this hardware? It's a physical component that you could be able to touch it. A physical component that you could be able to touch it and you can show to someone else. This is my pen, this is my microphone, this is my mouse, this is my laptop, or this is my keyboard and so on and so forth. Once it comes to software, you are unable to show it to someone else. Right? This, is a soft, this is a software, you can't touch it because it's something a written code. It's something a written code. It's, there's no any hardware available or you can't touch it and show. Everything, everything in a software is a piece of software code in an executable manner. You can use Java, Python, C Sharp, R, Ruby, or whatever the language. Anyone having any experience uh, in any language? Java, Python, all right. Two Python guys. Any other? All right, so basically, uh, yeah. Few Python heads are there. Anyone um, use C sharp, Java, object oriented language, any other object oriented language? No. Okay, uh, I could highly recommend you to learn at least one object oriented language, Java or C sharp basically. That provides your life much, much easier because uh, if you are learning Python, that's good. I'm not uh, stay that's bad or it's, it's something that you could not be uh, the perfect solution. But uh, learning an object oriented language might help you a lot. But compared to Python to object oriented languages like Java and C sharp, it might be a little bit tedious and a little bit hard to understand what are these concepts and stuff. Python is much easier to le learn. It's more quite, quite easier. But learning C sharp or Java might be help to you definitely because in next couple of uh, years, you have to face for all of these difficulties. So if you don't have any understanding about this, Object oriented programming means you might get into a trouble. If I'm not mistaken, ECU Sri Lanka provides a, a course related to C sharp, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Regardless of they are providing or not, I could highly recommend you to give a try because you are uh, still you are fresh. So you have time, you have energy. So especially once it comes to the, like uh, after the exams period, there's a duration around two weeks to, if I'm not mistaken, one month of a period you have uh, freely available. So you can utilize that time to learn this kind of uh, thing. So that's the best approach that uh, go through. I would highly recommend you to do that kind of a thing that might be much, much easier. And in future, even you might have much convenient environment that once it comes to development. Somehow, uh, these uh, programming languages used to develop these softwares and firmware. Anyone, anyone having any idea about what's a firmware? Basically, uh, 
firm there. Yeah? Yeah, Gairo? Uh, so for me, yeah, it's just like uh, mobile phone software or the OS of the mobile phones, right? So I, I, I don't have a, I, I don't have a fully idea about firmness, but is it just like that? Yeah, perfect. Right, uh, up to good extent, your your approach is good. Any other any other explanations? No. All right, basically, um, we have specified software, a special software that was focused only for specific hardware, basically. So that kind of a software is known as firmware. Now, if we take an example, we'll take the example from your friend, uh, from the <coughs> friend's end. Once we take an Android phone, especially, we'll get an example. I think you have, at least few of you have this experience. Uh, your mobile phone got stuck for a while and it states firmware upgrade. Anyone having that kind of experience? You can't do anything. You can't do anything. Your mobile phone stuck as it is. That uh, Android, uh, uh, that what we call that icon is in the screen. That's it. Or sometimes uh, there's some rendering or something, some few words with some progress by there. Finally, somehow, all together, it's asking firmware update. Anyone having this kind of experience? Yeah. Yeah, Vitum, you have that kind of experience. Yes, sir. it's like software update for the Android phones right yeah like perfect the... yeah it's kind of a software update actually what happens in here uh, in each and every uh, hardware device not only mobile phone but we could be able to realize this with you are doing uh, this uh, what we call this hardware course right mm -hmm. yeah so basically have you done any um, manual upgrades for android phones no uh we didn't do any uh, phone related stuff uh, but computer wow. related stuff we did all right, all right. All right nice. um here this uh, what happens in here uh, we'll take an example camera uh, sorry camera is not in here camera is in here, here right behind the scene camera now this camera needs special software it requires a special piece of software to perform the operations now, Android is the operating system. Android is the operating system. You will learn about these operating systems and other things in future. What happens in here, on top of this operating system, there are a piece of codes specified for different hardware devices. As an example, for camera, for keypad, uh, then microphone. So each and every hardware, each and every hardware requires special software pieces. So these pieces are known as the firmware. What is happening during the time of uh, firmware upgrade? There are special uh, upgrades that enabled for this hardware component. Then it's downloaded from the internet. Then it's automatically installed. Now and that, that gives one uh, clue for us. That means we don't want to interact with this firmware. It automatically it identifies the relevant stuff. Once it comes to software, we want to install it. We want to give commands or else we want to uh, download it and double click, agree, agreed, agreed for the uh, all the legal aspects, then next, 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 then final. Whatever the stuff, once we are installing a software, is different from installing a firmware. Firmwares are something that automatically identified and it's automatically upgrade or it might be stopping up to some extent or we don't want to bother at all we can't see even as a software as an example if we take microsoft word we can see the software but firmwares we could not see as like that that's the difference in between the software and firmware i think you got the story what is this uh, uh, story of the story behind this uh, 
software and firmware. But uh, you'll learn about this firmware again in future. At that time, I believe you have much more uh, knowledge than now regarding this uh, firmware. Any questions? Uh, this is same to like uh, BIOS update in computers, right? Yeah, perfect. An example is BIOS update. There's a power out, then uh, it will corrupt, right? Yeah. Perfect. Any other? So what's a processor? It's also called central processing unit. The processor, the central place, like your, your heart, it processes everything. Each and every time it processes your blood. If that is stopped, that's your last moment. Then you have to say bye bye. The brains of the computer, it, it, it decides a lot of things. If your brain is not in your head, you could do something. You could do something, but not something valuable. So if we can't remove the brain too, right? We can't remove the break, uh, brain, brain. Fundamentally, it's a programmable logic device. It has a lot of logics inside here. Rather than just a heart, brain has a lot of things to do. Lot of things to do. It needs to perform logical operations and so on and so forth. At the simplest level, it can turn electrical signals on off according to pre specified conditions like a switch. You can still switch on switch off switch on switch off switch on switch off have you seen this kind of waves forever zero one zero one zero one one zero one zero one not real all right here it's a zero here it's a one here it's a zero here it's a one these are electric pulse but this is some illusion that you are seeing there's no real world situation like this. You'll learn about these things uh, in near future. Okay, again, it's a zero, zero, one, one, zero, one. Right? This kind of a pulse is going on here. In simplest level, it's just a, a device that could understand all of these ones and zeros and transfer here and there. All you need to understand is a computer is a series of or a sequence of ones and zeros. Whatever the, see, the things that you are seeing in the screen, it's an illusion. There's no real world situation like that. Simply as an example, if you are watching a movie in YouTube and you enjoyed a lot and you enjoyed with this illusion, you enjoyed with ones and zeros. Behind the scenes, nothing. There's nothing. It's just series of ones and zeros. But you enjoyed a lot with this illusion. It hides everything and it, re and, it, and it represents this is the reality. But that is not the reality. The reality is totally hidden. You have seen ones and zeros. You enjoyed a lot with ones and zeros. I sent it. All right. Next, made of a lot of tiny electric switches, transistors connected together. Don't bother too much about. Uh, sometimes some of extend uh, the subject uh, is going to be uh, electrical engineering concepts uh, are covered, but not too much. So you don't want to bother uh, actually a lot because this is uh, uh, computer, uh, computer students are learning. The subject is learning by computer science students. So don't bother too much, but I think having some simple understanding what is a flip-flop and other stuff, sometimes it might be valuable for you, but not too detailed is required. Uh, 
but it's good to have some understanding then you could success this subject easily data and instructions what are these data and instructions it's just simple 1 or 0 data is 1 or 0 1 0 1 0 1 simply it is high or low on or off these are digital signals may be used to present one bit of binary number one bit of binary code control state and etc if i ask a question like this one zero one one zero one it's base two can you give the answer base ten in base ten base ten quick i will give a couple of minutes can you convert this binary into uh, decimal one zero one one zero one it's just binary conversion if you know the answer uh, don't put it into uh, the chat instead of you just uh, keep it with you raise your hand oh almost given the answer all right no worries thanks yeah you can raise your hand I got three hands up. How about the others? Thanks. Uh, I could see uh, five hands are up. Do I need to uh, show you how to uh, perform this operation? Thanks to the students who are raising your hands. I'm asking from the other students, do I need to uh, show you how to perform this operation, this conversion? You can raise your hand if it is yes. Needed or not? Gyro needed? No, right? Uh, ah, somehow. If you know how to convert it, uh, that's fine. This is. Um, Two to the power zero, two to the power one, two to the power two, two to the power three, and so on and so forth. Then finally, 
to add all of these values. What is the final answer? It's uh, 45. One. Uh, all right. Eh? 40, 44, 45. Altogether, the answer is 45. <coughs> there are different uh, tactics that uh, you people are using. That's fine. Computer data, uh, which is known as binary digit. It's bit, binary digit. It's a bit, simply a one or a zero. Bit. Once it comes to byte, eight bits are connected together. So that means zero, 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 how many? Three, six, seven, and eight. Altogether, there are eight zeros. So that means it's a one byte. Or it might be one, 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 one. Again, it's a byte. Or it might be. One zero zero one zero zero one zero. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, it's a bite. Word. Number of bits the processor is able to recognize and the process at a type. There's an example 16 bit processor has a word length of two bits, two bytes. So it has 16 bits altogether. Nibble, what is a nibble? It's four bits. Here you can see uh, two components in here, they have defined. Uh, one, two, three, four, it's higher nibble and the lower nibble. So simply, this is how uh, some data or some terminology related to the data. Data and instructions, uh, one of a very important uh, concept. Bytes are stored in the memory unit of a computer can represent a number of different things. Binary numerical data, coded data. What are the coded data? Text, images, sound, blah, blah, blah. Instruction codes. Now, the most uh, uh, dangerous word comes into the context instructions and instruction sets. If you don't know what is an instruction, if you don't have any idea how to work with instructions and instruction codes, please spend at least 30 hours from today onwards. Bare minimum will take 10 to 30 hours. It's not something easy again. That's my experience. I am pretty sure Dr. Ganesh also having the same kind of experience. First few part, mostly focus on these instructions. Operand uh, and program branching addresses. We we we're supposed to have a small discussion related to these addresses, but not detailed. So I think you could be able to understand these addresses later on. Well, differences lies on in the context how it is used and interpreted, else they cannot be differentiated. So this is a story of data and instructions. We'll definitely discuss about these things in future. Instruction sets and programs. I'm not going to uh, have much detailed discussion on these things now because we are supposed to discuss in module five and two uh, regarding these things. So instruction by record uh, interpreted by the CPU to perform an action. 
So this is an instruction. Good time to start your self-study work. But the problem here, it's difficult for human to write programs as one zeros. Isn't it? If you want to write a program, if you, if you want a sequence of ones and zeros, it might be a terrible experience. So what we are doing, we are performing same kind of thing, ones and zeros, but much easy to interpret it by a human, usually in English language, but there are other languages also to develop programs. Assemblers, uh, C language, Java, Python, and so on and so forth. Storage, uh, quite easy. There are primary and uh, secondary storage types are there. I'm pretty sure you know about these RAM, ROM, caching, and other stuff. Uh, we have different things in here. Don't bother too much about this subject. I'll come all the stuff during the module six. I'll discuss what is primary memory, what is secondary memory, why we need this primary memory, what is the architecture of this primary memory, the storage, the secondary storage, why we need a secondary storage, how it stores in memory and, uh, and related information. That's the story behind this storage and we are supposed to discuss that concept under module six from module six onwards you will be able to grab and move further input output devices io devices are the hardware devices that transfer data to end right keyboard mouse screen printer and so on and so forth need some method to transfer data because input output devices are focusing on uh, taking the data input into the system and taking data to the output uh, from the machine to output to the out the external environment uh, we will discuss about these things in future module seven and eight mostly focus on input output devices not just microphone and other stuff right I, much much detailed uh, discussions will be gone on uh, related to this input and output devices then <clears throat> here a basic computer system a computer is essentially a system that takes input data and process it and gives output input output and processing plus there's a storage which provides uh, this machine more robust how processor works oh the question comes in the story how processor works now if you have no idea what is this processor and if you don't have any idea oh my gosh what is this processing and stuff please make sure to go through because we are focusing on next week onwards this processing much detailed much harder to understand it's obvious at the first glance you could not be able to understand don't bother too much i'm not i'm not uh, letting you into fear but this is the reality this is the reality that uh, everyone was focused on, even including myself. It, it's not something easy to understand. So I could highly recommend you to understand, go through some additional materials. First of all, go through the materials given by Dr. Ganesh. Next, please go through some external materials, then attend to the class. After that, you'll be able to grab up to some good extent. If you haven't done anything, it might be much inconvenient for your life to uh, grab those things and go. We are focusing on this fetch, decode, and execution cycles uh, in future, uh, module two and three. There are mainly two types of softwares, operating systems and application softwares. We are supposed to discuss uh, especially uh, with this operating system, the process life cycles, 
right? There's a start and there's a ready queue and it uh, starts to run in state, then it's uh, finish, and there might be some interrupts in here and there, all right? So, and there might be some uh, timeouts, different things are there. This is one of a uh, process state diagram, very high level. So this kind of a thing happened uh, in an operating system. We're supposed to discuss these things in uh, module nine. So, uh, I will give some additional details also uh, regarding these operating systems. Then uh, the next one is application software, which is that, which is which are the softwares that you use day to day basis. Then networks and internet, uh, one of the interesting subject area, uh, how the uh, computers are connected to each other how these computers are connected with each other, how you transfer a packet of data, a data packet from one end to another end. Uh, I'm not going to, not going to do detailed on this networking and internet, but in high level, in high level, I'm going to discuss all of these things during the module 10. So uh, here we are focusing on uh, basic, uh, hardware components like routers, switches, and other stuff. So you could be able to grab it and understand, all right, uh, what are these functionalities, why why we need, uh, how these connect to a computer and uh, how these things are work and so on and so forth. There are different uh, categories of computers, uh, embedded co computers, personal computers, servers and enterprise systems, supercomputers and grid computers and so on and so forth. So we have different uh, levels of in here. We'll go one by one. At the beginning, you could see uh, embedded computers. What is the, what are these embedded computers? These embedded computers are nothing. It's just uh, a series of uh, devices or a specific computer device integrated into a large device used for specific purposes rather than general purposes. And examples are mobile phones. It has very specific objective to perform. So it's known as embedded computer, very common and very generic. Personal computers. What are these personal computers? Like laptops, desktops, and stuff. Servers and enterprise systems. What are these? Application servers, database servers, simply you might say app servers, web servers, DB servers. Nowadays, it's much, much more into cloud environment rather than on-premises application development. Cloud in the sense, it's just like the service provider provides all the required uh, things, sometimes they include in the software, which is known as software as a service, or it might be infrastructure as a service or a platform as a service. So different levels of services provided by uh, the, uh, information, the infrastructure provider or the provider, cloud service provider. We all need to do is we need to configure it and use it, that's all. We don't want to purchase this hardware and other stuff. Supercomputers and grid computers. <clears throat> what are the things happen in a supercomputer? It's uh, very powerful, simply it's highest powerful, used for highly demanding computers. General purposes versus embedded systems. General purpose computers are normal computers in generic terms so that we use day to day life. But embedded devices do have very specific objective to perform a specific operation, such as microwaves, air conditions, televisions, cars, and so on. So Somehow we have uh, to understand both have the same general architecture and principles of operation. We are supposed to discuss all of these things in module 11. We'll discuss very detailed under this module 11. Next, brief history of computers. One of an uh, interesting story uh, comes to you. Um, basically, uh, as usually, I could give this time also opportunity to you to 
start your research life you know one of very important skill that you should have uh, during your uh, graduation time to research to find it from a reliable source to find it from a reliable source what are the reliable sources books journal articles research papers so those kinds of reliable articles reliable information sources should be found at the beginning then you should quickly grab what they have uh, discussed then finally you should come up with uh, some sort of uh, output so i would like to create you into different groups now uh, i could create random groups uh, where where i could create you into random groups where is these groups where are these groups <sighs> For some reason, I'm unable to divide you into groups, breakout groups. So I think uh, since Dr. Ganesh created the link, I'm unable to perform that operation. Yeah, it seems uh, I'm unable to do so. Probably uh, I will uh, create a new link and I will share it with you. Probably that might be helpful. Then I could be able to do. Somehow we'll give a try again, and uh, if it is not working, I will. Uh, I will definitely uh, give another link. Uh, then that's fine. Now basically. Uh, since we are unable to divide into groups, uh, we'll do like this. We will uh, create a document and I will ask everyone to add the details in a relevant order. History, history of the computers, all right. From uh, how we are going to divide, we have how many students in here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine students. All right, we have nine students, and uh, what we can do, we can divide you into different uh, areas based on whatever. Chronological order, all right, somehow, what you need to do is you need to create this document, fulfill this document in chronological order. Uh, we'll start with 1960, sorry, uh, 1640, if I'm not mistaken, 42. Yeah, we can start with 1942 and we can stop, uh, I don't know where, uh, 2022, somewhere. At the bottom, I have defined it's 2022. All right. I will share the link with you now. Only specific came. Anyone with the link? Don't love editing. Copy, share. I could expect uh, everyone would be able to add details to this uh, Excel sheet. Everyone can go to this uh, sheet now.
it's in the chat the link is in the chat the book is in the chat all right i can see the students are uh, accessing to the file here you could see uh, the topic i'll highlight it history of the computers and i have given a starting point you could see uh, 1642 and uh, at the bottom i have uh, defined as uh, 2022 but you you could feel free to change it uh, up to a level some level during that period from last few centuries computers was evolved a lot so all you need to do uh, a similar kind of a thing like 1962 what they have done and some sort of a small description so each one can find one sorry not one will take uh, everyone could be able to find three three or five three to five uh, information so if one selected uh, a specific one you you could select another one so similarly you could share don't fight each other don't delete others the very first thing don't delete others you know every uh, point is recorded in here so please don't delete others i don't think so you people are primary school right so you people are much uh, responsible uh, people in the world and uh, you could uh, represent same responsible behavior in here too so you can start i will give around uh, 10 minutes last time if i'm not mistaken i have given 20 to 30 minutes for some reason uh, no not the reason the number of students are higher than uh, last time i think somehow somehow uh, that's fine right so uh, no uh, you have to edit in here i have to edit in here yeah yeah computer details short description all right so you could add the uh, into here all right start it uh, i could uh, need to get an output around uh, 27 to at least like 25 to 50 of uh, data records start
I could see uh, most of you uh, working on the sheet. Uh, how about the others? Anyone uh, missed it? No, right? Everyone is okay. And uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, good engagement uh, actually happening. So keep this uh, effort persistently, then you could be able to uh, do a lot. And uh, so basically now uh, we have to go a little bit further and uh, these are the historical things. I think uh, I don't want to speak about these things. Uh, 1942, 1945. I'm pretty sure you all learned these things in your uh, grade 11, uh, 10, 11 time about these historical stories, how it was evolved uh, into different levels like personal computers and stuff. So I don't want to uh, move with these things. I just uh, skim about uh, those things. And uh, <clears throat> uh, brief history. Uh, comes with uh, important point with the variable computers and other stuff. So watch uh, smart watches and other things. So the uh, world is moving very, very fast. And uh, one of another concept that we want to focus in here is the Internet of Things, uh, which is known as IoT, uh, one of very, very uh, interesting uh, subject area, especially the electrical engineering and electronics uh, people moving much towards this uh, IoT world. Uh, it's a combination of computer plus uh, some special hardware devices. We, 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 as a normal person, we don't want to bother too much about the hardware. It's just uh, having different uh, plugs to be uh, connected and uh, do the fancy things. And a lot of sensor related information is uh, focus on uh, this internet of things. And uh, we could uh, see most of the things in module 11. And, uh, you know, due to this uh, situation, I don't think so. You could be able to find sufficient hardware, uh, Raspberry Pis and other stuff, uh, to get some experience uh, from your end. But uh, uh, theoretically, we'll cover uh, this module 11 work. Uh, I'm not going to give any demonstration or any other thing related to IoT, but for fun, uh, you can try along yourself if you could find any uh, related hardware. And uh, these are the current general trends in computer. So the cost of the computer has generally dropped and the number of computers, the devices has grown exponentially. The amount of data being produced has uh, gone exponentially and blah, 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 blah. A lot of things happened uh, during this time. And you could see there's a big uh, uh, increment in here. Right? So that's the uh, situation that uh, in the world. And uh, yeah, that's all uh, we need to uh, understand today. Uh, what are the unit uh, outcomes we have covered for the most of the part? Today, just uh, giving the grounds up uh, discussion, how to make, uh, get an idea about the overall idea about the subject and what are the things that we are focusing on and so, so, and so forth. If you have any questions, you feel free to ask. No. <coughs> Uh, there's a question, uh, notes, uh, actually this is uh, a university level of uh, discussion. So there's no plan to give any notes to you. I'm not sure whether you want this kind of uh, uh, notes and other stuff. Huh? Uh, but I would highly encourage you to have your own notes as well as the PowerPoint slides are in uh, 
the canvas so you could able to download and go through but personally i don't prefer to give any notes kind of a thing then your creativity your ability to think uh, like working as an individual taking decision individual decisions uh, in appropriate paces so those things should be improved you know some sometimes management will put uh, uh, get upset with uh, these decisions but uh, your 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 uh, your uh, decision should be the most uh, appropriate decision for that time sometimes it might be uh, not the best option that you have to go to but uh, it depends on the situation sometimes uh, uh, some people would stay all right why don't you take this one and other stuff so uh, by having this kind of a creative uh, work you should be able to grab these skills those are skills actually to get the leadership and uh, taking your own notes taking correct decision so all of these things will be uh, covered under individual worker as an individual worker so i don't uh, focus to give any kind of a thing any kind of a note or any other thing but uh, the required materials is available in uh, the module so there's another question uh, do we need to start any assignments this week not really uh, you don't have to work on any assignment today itself but next day onwards you have uh, you have what we call another uh, you from next week onwards you have uh, <clears throat> quizzes so daily basis quizzes you could be able to complete from next week onwards today or today you don't have anything any other questions? No. Okay, then, if you don't have any questions, uh, we leave today and uh, we'll meet next week please make sure to keep your attendance persistently uh, please don't let your life or my life into a trouble so please attend to the lectures you know these are all all digital footprints are here when you have logged when you have logged out and everything is recorded so please make sure to log in the correct time and you could leave at the end of the session all right so uh, that's all for today then we'll meet next week uh, before attending to the next week, I'm pretty sure uh, you all will go through the materials in the uh, site and uh, learn up to good extent and join to the session. All right, then until the next week, see you. Bye bye. We'll meet next week. Thank you, sir.